Hi, my name is Mariska Rulofs and I work as career specialist at Tampere University in Finland. In this video I will discuss career management and how it's important for doctoral researchers. I'll also discuss how career planning, in my opinion, should be an ongoing process or perspective rather than an activity you only engage in once it's time to find a job or change jobs. To summarize, my message in this video is career management is an active and flexible learning process and requires a curious mindset. Let's start by taking a look at what career management is in a nutshell and what the career perspectives are for doctoral researchers, generally speaking. Then we'll take a look at how, as a researcher, you can incorporate career management in your daily thinking and how this will help you be ready once it's time to go job hunting, whether it's in or outside of academia. Let's first take a quick look at the career perspectives for doctoral researchers. Where traditionally writing a doctoral thesis was the first step in an academic career focused on research, this is no longer automatically the case. The situation might differ somewhat in different countries, but generally speaking, the employment rate of doctoral degree holders is high. Different studies, however, show that less and less doctoral degree holders end up staying in academia. In some studies, as little as 10 to 30 percent. Again, this may vary from one country to the next. This situation has to do with several factors. For example, the number of doctoral degree holders has been increasing for years. Other factors have to do with difficulties to find funding, the declining number of permanent positions and a challenging work-life balance in academia, combined with fierce competition. In this situation, it's more and more important for doctoral researchers to be aware of other career options outside of academia. And it does seem that interest in other job prospects is indeed growing. In other words, it's good to be aware of your other options as well, whether you're interested in the public sector, the industry, or in becoming an entrepreneur and starting maybe a business of your own. Developing a broader perspective on your career can be interesting too, as you realize you may have more options than you think. Before we talk about how to develop alternative career plans, let's take a short look at some career planning theories. You could say that career planning is a very concrete activity. You sit down, take a look at what you have to offer, do some research into where to find the jobs and then devise a plan how to hunt for these. This is the more traditional way of looking at career planning as illustrated in the career triangle. This model gives us a clear step-by-step -step overview and it helps to define a clear plan and goals and as such can be a very helpful tool. It also shows how we need to have a good foundation of knowledge, knowledge about ourselves and our options before we can find a job. Lately though, our thinking about career planning has been changing somewhat. From a step-by-step -step analytical approach, career theory is moving in a more fluid direction. More and more, we're asking, is it still possible to plan a career? Or is this an illusion in these times? And does coincidence play a big role in this process? This has to do with how employability and job markets are changing. From lifetime employment in a certain field and clear career paths to a flexible, skilled workforce moving in and out of different roles and learning new skills and acquiring new knowledge throughout their careers. This is clearly illustrated in, for example, the planned happenstance theory, which says that chance events and unpredictable social factors and changes in our environment play such a big role in our lives that it's not really possible to plan our whole career ahead. We are not in control of these factors, nor can we predict them, but we can adapt an attitude to benefit from these changes rather than struggle with them. We can do this by being active, resilient, and by creating opportunities to engage in. We should not try to oversee the whole process, but rather be curious, flexible, and open to new ways of doing. In this way, we can also influence our career because we can actively create more opportunities, for example, by networking, visiting career events, asking feedback, and by simply trying out new things. 
So, what happens if we combine the two different perspectives? Could we end up with something like this? On the one hand, we need to work on a good foundation. This means, for example, you need to know yourself, know your motivation for work, know what makes work meaningful to you, and get to know the work market. Then you can set goals and plan. However, in the meantime, you need to also be aware of how unplanned and planned events may trigger changes and opportunities may present themselves in places you didn't expect them. This means that you may have to change your plans accordingly. It also means you need to have an open mind and be curious to spot these opportunities. And you can also create chances along the way by interacting with different people, different work environments as you go along. Reflection is a crucial ingredient too in this whole process. How does this all reflect on me? How does this then translate to the situation of being a doctoral researcher and how can you incorporate career management into your normal work mode? Here are some suggestions. I divided them in three themes, reflect, learn by doing and building networks. First of all, reflect. It's good to reflect regularly on your motivation. Which part of your work motivates or demotivates you? What gives meaning to your work? Which tasks are easy to engage in, which give energy? What would be a dream project for you? Try to keep a log and take notes of your observations. It's good to reflect on the skills you're developing as well, and specifically the transferable skills. In what way could the skills you're developing now also be useful in a different sector? And what would be a good way to describe these skills to someone outside of academia? What skills would you like to develop? And how could this be done? Think about your added value. What do you have to offer? How would you market yourself to an interesting employer? And what do you bring? The second theme is learn by doing and engaging in different activities. I would suggest engaging in different activities, trying out new things, visiting events, taking part in activities also outside your field or scope of research. You could maybe volunteer somewhere or learn something new. Don't limit yourself only to everything academic. Or take part in a career course or learn a new skill. The last theme is build and learn from interdisciplinary networks and have a curious mindset. While you're doing your research, you will meet different people and build networks all the time possibly also beyond academia. It's good to be aware of these people and recognize the value of this network. Be curious, ask questions, talk to people in your network. Why do they do what they do? How did they end up where they are? Practice talking to people outside of your field. Maybe even ask to interview people about their jobs and how they got there. Use these experiences to reflect on your own career options. Talk to other researchers about career themes. Many researchers struggle with these questions and it can be a relief to openly discuss these. As you can see, there's a lot that you can do already, long before the actual job hunting takes place. The more time you will invest in this now, the less stress later. It's time to summarize our findings. Career management is an active and flexible process. It's not a task of your employer or HR or a pre-planned path you just follow. It's not a one-time activity, but rather a continuous learning curve. It evolves as you do and should be part of your PhD ideally from an early stage on. So getting back to the beginning of this video, I will come back to the summary of this introductory talk about career management. Career management is an active and flexible learning process and requires a curious mindset. As a researcher, you probably already have that curious mindset. All you do is apply this to the career management process as well. It means mostly having your eyes and ears open, being aware of what transferable skills you are developing and seeing and grabbing opportunities that arise and creating opportunities to engage in new activities. Naturally, there will be times during your doctoral research when you will want to or need to focus on your research only. This is only natural. There is no use to force yourself. 
But don't wait too long though, or get so caught up in your research that you postpone this to the point where it becomes a source of stress. Often it already helps to just keep an open mind and keep a log every now and then to make sure that you will see the opportunities that will present themselves. You can develop your career thinking along the way so that by the time you're ready and you're handing in your doctoral thesis, this will not be an added pressure, but rather you will be aware of your skills and curious to see where you're heading next.